Hey, what's up? My name is Dominique. Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to be doing a full face of makeup using products that I regret buying. These are products that I bought because they were trendy or because I wanted to try them, and they ended up just simply not working for me. Most of these products that I have sitting in front of me are extremely popular products. Some of them might be a little controversial to be in this video, and some might be an unpopular opinion, but I'm just here to keep it real with you. If a product didn't work for me and it was trendy, I'm I'm gonna let you know. And before we get into the video, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment about what product you regret buying, and of course, as always, don't forget to subscribe so that we can become besties. All right, let's get into the video. We're starting off extremely controversial already, okay? So the first product is this Super Goop Glow Screen Sunscreen. I know. I know. Everyone is obsessed with this sunscreen. People come in and ask for this at Sephora constantly, daily. They love this stuff. But for me, I just feel like the texture is too thick. And honestly, I don't like that. I don't like a thick sunscreen. It's supposed to be tinted, yet it adds absolutely no color to your skin. So it's like, what's the point of it even being tinted? And honestly, it just feels kind of oily on the skin. And I'm just saying this because I've tried other sunscreens that feel actually like a moisturizer on the skin versus something that's thick and oily. Plus it leaves like this shiny, glittery glow on your fingers after you apply it to your face. And it's just not the vibe for me. But that's okay, it doesn't mean that it's a bad product. Okay, so product number two that I regret buying is foundation. And this foundation is extremely controversial. I'm really choosing violence today. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I know, trust me, I know, I know. How could I think this? This is an extremely popular and loved foundation. Like People ride and die for this one. It's been around forever. People come into Sephora asking for it daily. It's sells like crazy, but she is $69 at Sephora. That is so pricey for a foundation. Oh my gosh. And to me, I just feel like she doesn't really do anything crazy for me, in my opinion. I'm just gonna apply it like I do all my foundations by putting it on my face with the pump first, and then I'm gonna blend it out with a brush. So we're already off to a rough start using this foundation and the sunscreen underneath. Although I do know that the sunscreen does wear really well under foundation, so I'm not too worried about that part. It's mainly just how it feels for me. Like this foundation does not smell good. It smells like factory. The foundation is also supposed to be extremely luminous, and that's really what sells the foundation, and that's why it's so hyped up. But the only reason why my skin looks luminous right now is because I put the Super Goop Glow Screen on underneath. I feel like the foundation just brings out my texture. Every single time I wear it, I don't know why, it just does. And I have really dry skin, so if you have oily skin or combo skin, you actually might really like this foundation, truly. But if you have dry skin and you truly want a glowy foundation, there are so many better options out there. Trust me. Especially for the price point, I just feel like it doesn't do what I want it to do. You can see here how it just brings out my texture and enhances my pores. And I really just don't like that about this foundation. But I do have to admit that with the glow screen on underneath, it looks really pretty actually. But I'm telling you, if you wear this by yourself, it will not be this glowy at all. All. To me, it really doesn't even have a glow finish. It just has like a natural finish. Not matte, not glowy, just nice and soft. Which I mean, if that's what you're looking for, then this might be for you, but it's not for me. Product number three that I regret buying is the Kosas Concealer. And let me tell you something about Kosas. When Kosas first started in Sephora, everybody was coming in asking for Kosas. At my Sephora store, we used to have a baby end cap section of Kosas and everyone would flock to it when we first got it. But now we expanded into a whole gondola shelf of just Kosas makeup and nobody comes in asking for Kosas anymore. It's like the trend of Kosas has kind of died down a little and it's really interesting to see how trends play out in real life, especially at a store. The one thing that I didn't really like about Kosas is their shade range. This shade is too warm and I feel like all their shades kind of look chalky and have that like gray green undertone. Just the shade range of them is just not it. So obviously the shade of something plays a really big part in whether I like a product or not. I also feel like I wish that it was just a little bit more full coverage. 
and it definitely creases a little bit. It does not last all day. I mean, the product itself blends like a dream. It's just the shade range for me and how it creases. For me, it just doesn't work. I know so many more concealers that I will use before I use this Kosas one. And I mean, that's simply why I regret buying it. You can already see it creasing on my eyelids a little bit, and that is not good because I have not had this on very long at all. And that's the tea on the Kosas concealer. The next product that I regret buying is gonna be a little controversial as well. The Givenchy Prisme Libre Setting Powder. I can't with this. This is $69 for a setting powder. And I think a high price point is really swaying my opinion towards all of these products because I can think of so many other products for cheaper than the ones I've mentioned here that perform better or just as good. You do get a little puff inside the powder, so that's really nice. And for $59, you better give me a puff because $60 for a setting powder You've gotta be kidding me. There's four shades of the powder that are supposed to be color correcting shades and then when you mix them together, they blend into your skin tone. I have the shade four and as you can see here when you mix them together, they mix to be more of a skin tone shade. Which I mean, that's pretty cool I guess to look at. But the color correcting part of it, I don't really think it does that. And honestly, I just feel like there's no reason for it to be $60 besides the brand name because it doesn't really do much for me. It really just mattifies my foundation just as good as any other powder that you can get at Sephora or even at Ulta or the drugstore. I don't really think it goes crazy with the blurring effect and it's just an okay powder. I mean, if you have money and you wanna splurge on a powder, by all means, this is gonna do its job for sure and you probably won't be disappointed with it, but just know for $60, it's not anything special. And I'm inhaling like a bunch of talc right now, which is great for me. So the fourth product is a little duo, and this duo is a fan favorite, the Charlotte Tilbury Wands. We got the contour wand, and we got the highlight blush wand. Both of these products have an extremely glowy finish, like a highlighter, which is cute. The product is cute, it looks good, but the problem here is that it's $42 each. So in total, I literally spent $84 on these and you don't even have a lot of product in them. I mean, the packaging is innovative, that's for sure. There was really nothing like this on the market, so that's probably why it took the entire internet by storm, because people could make cute makeup videos with it, and it was very trendy and aesthetic. And I mean, these were sold out at my Sephora for literally a year straight. 365 days, you could not get this, and people were coming in asking for it constantly. This product truly had its moment, and I I mean, same with the blush too, but the contour one was like, everybody wanted the contour wand. That is for sure. And I mean like, where did it go? I'm sorry, it's really just not doing anything for me for $42. I mean, you just saw how much I put on of this on my forehead and you can't see any of it. I'm gonna try a sponge now. And I mean, I remember trying this when I first got it and I was like, oh, it's okay, it's cute. But now I barely use it because I don't wanna have to put on 800 layers. And this is the fair medium shade. And I'm just saying for three layers, it should not look like this, but it is cute. So yes, for $42, I unfortunately regret buying this one. I'm just so extra with my makeup and I just need more. Because my makeup routine has a lot of steps, I wanna do it fast and I don't wanna have to sit here and apply layer after layer just to get it how I want it to be. Cause baby, I got stuff to do and so do you. You got stuff to do too. But instead of doing the things that we need to do, we are ignoring all of our responsibilities and here we are, I'm talking about makeup together. Love that for us. <laughs> what a great way to spend our day. Thanks for being here with me today. I'm having so much fun and I hope you are too. What do you think? For $42, is she giving what she needs to? I would have to say no. And the blush is the exact same story. This is a prime example of why this product sucks, <laughs> literally. Okay, sucks is an exaggeration, but it's a prime example of why I don't like this product. It is so messy, look at this. All I did was take off the lid. So apparently I forgot to lock this part right here when I closed it. And when you forget to do that, you can have an explosion of the product all over the tube. And I mean, I paid $42 for this and now it's leaking everywhere, so that sucks. And the blush is extremely glowy and it's actually really cute, but it's just not pigmented enough for me. I mean, it's literally not even showing up on camera right now. <laughs> 
That's crazy. And all I am is sitting in front of a window. Literally, that's my lighting, this window. And it's not even showing up. But if you are a natural makeup lover, you actually might like this a lot because it's not intense. But for $42, you can get so many other liquid blushes or cream blushes for that price that are pigmented and just as beautiful. Do I look like I just put $80 on my face? I would have to say no. I don't think it does. I have to admit that I like the blush a little bit better than I like the contour, but I do regret hopping on the bandwagon and buying these when they came back in stock because to me, they were not worth the hype. They just didn't work for me. Unfortunately, something so expensive did not work. And that's the tea on that. I am looking like a dry. I wish the camera could truly pick up what I'm seeing in the mirror. Like I wish I could just transfer the mirror image to the camera. What if they could do that? Like a mirror recording device, I don't know. The next two products might shock you, but I regret buying the Rare Beauty Luminizer and the blush. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. Starting off with the blush, I think it's cute. I love Rare Beauty, I love Selena Gomez. By all means, if you love this product, that is amazing and I love that for you because I know that there are a lot of people out there who ride or die this product. But for me, to me, I know if a liquid blush formula is amazing or not by whether or not you can blend it out on top of powder. This is in the shade Grace, by the way. And unfortunately, Miss Rare Beauty cannot be blended over powder. I'm gonna mess up my makeup. I also feel like it dries down pretty fast. And this is exactly why I don't like it. You can see I'm already starting to blend it out and you can see the exact shape of where the product was first laid down. You can still see the outline right there. And it's not blending over powder. It's simply just not. I did get it to blend out after a little arm workout. But with this, you can only do one side at a time because it does dry down really fast. And that's why I don't like it. And it does not look the best over a powder. But you can just see the patchiness. It does not blend like a dream, that's for sure. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna try my best to blend it out. So here's the liquid blush all blended out. And I did get it to blend out, so thank goodness. But honestly, I just don't love how it looks. You can see See back here how it's a little patchy. I just don't like how it looks and that's okay. That is okay. I can think of other liquid blushes and cream blushes that I like and prefer over this one that sit a little nicer on top of powder and blend out easier, but that's just me. And for similar reasons, I feel like I don't like the liquid luminizer because it just is hard to blend out on top of powder. And when you blend it out, it kind of goes away. I personally am not a fan of liquid luminizers because of the reason when you blend it out they kind of go away and this is also hard to blend out as well so definitely not my fave i'm gonna blend it out with the same brush it kind of just picks up on texture and just blends out into really nothing i don't know i really just don't like how it looks on my skin with the texture like i just wish that you could see this in person how textured my skin looks right now it does not look smooth and blended it really just looks rough and textured. I don't think that these products complement powder underneath them. I just don't. And babes, that's not for me. If you don't like to set your face and you like to wear these products by themselves, you might love it. Seriously, do not get me wrong. They're still good products. It's just not for me. And if I want to glow and if I want to blush, I'm going to be using other products, not these. I mean, I got these and I rarely use them. Rarely. I rarely use them. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> I can't. But yeah, it's true. I do. I rarely use them. Another product I regret buying is this Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Mascara. Listen, I wanted to love this one. I truly did because Rihanna is my girl. And honestly, I do love Fenty makeup. This mascara looks beautiful on the lashes. It lengthens them like nobody's business. It separates the lashes and it adds volume. It is such a beautiful mascara. But the reason why I regret buying this is because every single time I wear this mascara, it ends up on my lid. It transfers onto my upper lid and I simply cannot stand that. I hate when mascara transfers onto my lid because throughout the day, someone will come up to me and be like, you have mascara 
mascara on your eyelid. Or I'll look in the mirror and I will have black all over my eyelid. And then it one, ruins my eyeshadow, and two, makes me upset because now I have to worry about my mascara on my eyelid. So I just prefer to use a mascara that won't transfer onto my eyelid. And as tragic as this is, because it looks beautiful on the lashes, I simply regret buying this mascara. And I'm pretty sad about it because I wanted to love this and I wanted it to work so much. And we are almost done with the look. I have one more product for you and it's a lip product. So the last product that I regret buying, for this video that is, because I have a lot more products that I've bought that I simply don't really love so if you want to see a part two let me know but the last product that I bought and I regret is this makeup by Mario lip plumper lip gloss serum this is in the shade mauve glow it's super cute I love this color and honestly I love the gloss I love the formula it feels really good the plump is comfortable but for me the problem with this is the packaging so you can see after one use the formula starts to peek over the top of the lipstick packaging and I don't don't really love that because then it makes it messy so unless you want to clean the lid after every single use it's kind of annoying I just wipe it all off and now it's good to go back in the packaging I mean that's all it's not that big of a deal I love the gloss itself and how it feels on the lips and how it looks I mean it looks beautiful it's just the packaging for me the more you twist up the product the more you're gonna have leaking over the top after you put it on so just beware when trying these because in my mind this should be quick on the go easy lip shine but if you got to clean off the packaging every single time it's not really quick and convenient that's just my opinion and that's it it's quite unfortunate to have so many products that I regret buying, but that's what I get for trying out a new makeup product that comes out or trying out makeup that has been extremely hyped up and trendy over the internet. But hopefully this helps you make decisions on what you wanna buy with your money. Because baby, in today's economy, we cannot just be throwing money out the window. That's a no-no, except for me when I spent $80 on this and it didn't work. I feel like for my little viewfinder on my camera, my makeup looks so good and glowy, but in person oh baby my cheeks right here are looking rough I mean up close this is what the cheek looks like it's just not giving what it needs to it's not a sleigh I feel like I have some texture right here and my forehead has these creases on it it's just a no for me and that's it I had so much fun making this video today I hope you had just as much fun watching it it was quite interesting going back and revisiting all these products that I have not used in a really long time because I just remember not liking them and I was right I do regret buying them all so thanks so much for hanging out with me today and before you go make sure to give this video a thumbs up leave a comment if you've tried any of these products and what you think about them and of course as always don't forget to subscribe so that we can become besties i will see you next week with a brand new video and i'm so excited because it's gonna be a good one thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one